Um, lower the price of your rides. That's pretty important. Make sure all your paths are covered by handymen because there's so many roller coasters you're going to have to throw up everywhere. Um, mechanics, I'd say for this park, at least five or six. I have seven, and that's more than enough, I think. Um, and yeah, just build a lot of gentle rides and thrill rides because you already have a ton of roller coasters and you don't really need to build those right off the bat. Um, I'm not going to really do anything with this park for a couple of years because I think it's going to sustain itself and do pretty well. Right now, as far as objectives go, I have a park value of 18000 So I'm almost meeting the objective at the end of year one. Um, what's going to happen over these next two years, this park value is going to go down. It's going to go down probably to like, I'm just going to guess, like fifteen or 16000 by year three. So what you're going to want to do then to get your park value back up is build a whole bunch of roller coasters and new rides in the middle to end of year three. And that will just, you know, make your park value skyrocket. Um, and that should get you, that should get you through this park and beat the objective. And that's, that's basically all you really need to do to pass this park is just build a whole bunch in year three. It's going to be frustrating and difficult if you try and build rides all the way throughout. You'll have a really cool park, but it'll be hard to maintain the park value if you, you know, use all your money to build roller coasters and then run out of money to, you know, re-sustain your park value. Um, I feel like I'm just rambling, and there's not really that much else to say, so... Um, yeah, once you get the park started and you get your handyman and mechanics and food courts and everything all that covered, this park is really easy. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, so... Um, yeah, just try to do some sort of setup like this, and then just wait a few years before building more rides. Um, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna wait to check in with you guys probably May or June of year three, and then, uh, I might have built like one or two rides by then, and I'll just, I'll just tell you what I've done. Um, also, yeah, don't forget to lower your prices, that's a big thing. Uh, periodically check your rides, make sure people are still riding them, if people are not riding them. Uh, lower the price of the ride. So yeah, I'll check with you guys in a little bit. Alright, hey everybody. Uh, we're back here in Diamond Heights. And this is my park. Um, since I last checked in with you guys, it was like the end of year one, I think. And pretty much all I did was let it run for two years and adjust the prices on everything. And um, just to give you an idea of where everything is at, the price of this roller coaster is now a dollar fifty, and so is claustrophobia, the other one. Um, this one I think is like two, or it's like at a dollar, or the no, that's the railroad. Okay, yeah, the railroad's at a dollar. This roller coaster is at two. Um, one thing that I didn't do was I didn't change my research to maximum funding, so I got a whole bunch of like really stupid things. Like, for example, a chairlift you don't really need in this park. It'd kind of be okay, but there's already a railroad system, so... Um, water slide's cool, but, like, these are the things you don't really care for. Like, ride improvements, mouse cars on the wooden crazy rodent roller coaster. Those are kind of cool, but they're, I don't know, they're not as useful as getting new rides. Because you want as much diversity in your park as you can. Observation tower is cool. But yeah, oh wait, what was that? Agoraphobia has crashed. Six people died. Wow. Okay. I guess if it crashes, the ride closes permanently, so I must have... I did take care of that. I do... Okay. It's been a while since I was recording, so I forgot about that. But yeah, this roller coaster crash. But just to show you, like, I think people are still riding it. Yeah, there's still quite a few people on it. It didn't really affect anything. What'll happen with those is the station platform brakes will go out. It has nothing to do with the ride. The ride works because they give it to you that way, but after the ride's been around for a really long time, sometimes something breaks, and usually it's the station platform breaks, and then since there's two trains, the second train runs into the first and blows up, and all the people that were on it died. But luckily it was only six and not a full car. So that probably means the price was too high when it happened. Anyway, um, yeah, one other thing. 
for roller coasters and um, most other excitement and thrill rides and stuff like those those types of rides. Under here, I always just do no minimum wait time, a max wait time of 30 seconds, and always go for a full load because if you do a full load, um, you'll get the most number of people on your ride and you'll you'll reduce the number of people that are in your queue lines and that's the most efficient that you can do. And if it doesn't fill up, I feel like 30 seconds is a pretty safe time to wait before you take off. And that way you'll at least get a fair number of people on there. So these roller coasters are kind of cool. I think that I like the design that they did with this. The synchronized loop-de-loops and then the synchronized going through the loops. Um, I kind of wish that I had time to design stuff like that. But these scenarios are not very long, so... You can't really, you don't really have time to do that. Where does the black one come out? Must be under. Oh, he went underground for that whole. Let's look at that. So it goes. Where did it go? Yeah, it goes underground right here. You can kind of see the track. Yeah, here it is. And it goes uphill a little bit. And it goes up and around here in the trees. And then it goes back and then comes out from underneath the merry ground That's kind of cool. I like that. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, the other things that I did in the two-year span while we were away, um, I built this water slide. Um, and for rides like this, like this water slide, this boat hire, these mini cars right here, and this log flume, you only have like two or four passengers on each um, thing. So instead of waiting 30 seconds, just go, just go for, wait for waiting for a full load. I didn't do it there, but that's what I meant to do. Just wait for two people, because that's all you're, that's all you're waiting for. There's no reason to wait amount of time, and most likely you'll get two people pretty quick anyway. So, like the only scenario where that wouldn't work is if there's only one person in line, and I don't know. I just I think it's stupid to. Yeah, you're always going to have that. So, anyway, um, so, they give you a really good park. It's really easy to maintain, and they give you a lot of diversity of rides to start with. So, really, this park is not very challenging. Um, oh, I forgot. I also built this steel mini roller coaster, and it's a disaster because I forgot to hire a handyman to cover the new padding. So... What I'm going to do, I'm going to hire a mechanic, and I'm going to hire him to look after all of this. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Um, and I'll have him also cover the Indiana Railroad and that one as well. So he'll just kind of help the other mechanic out as best he can. Hopefully he does stuff right. If not, I have a couple of roaming mechanics that I was talking about earlier. Uh, and I'm going to hire a handyman. I'm actually going to just, I don't really care. Money's not a problem at this point, so I'm going to hire a couple. Is that covering that? It's not. Oh, wow. Okay. So going with that, you have to go like that to cover it. Okay, so you got to tell him not to mow the grass. And then this mechanic, I've got to change. Oh, he was okay. Alright, I just goofed. Okay, and I'm going to hire one more handyman to help out. Oh, another thing that researched um, was, by the way, this is... That right there is one of the most annoying things I've found in the game. You can't tell, like if I click that twice, you can't tell whether it's blue or not underwater. And I don't know, maybe if you did a under, uncheck this, you could, uh, no, you still can't. So I think that's one of the flaws of the game. You can't tell if they're covering pads because the padding shows up on the ground, which is under the water, and you can't tell when it's active or not, so... I have no idea if that guy's covering that area or not, but oh well.